Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the concept of mutation testing. Now, mutation testing has been around for a long, long time. However, Striker.net, the library I'm going to use to showcase the feature to you today, makes it very easy to get into and I think it's a brilliant library. So at any point, if you think that what you're seeing is interesting, please use the link in the description and give them a star on GitHub because they can use all the exposure they can get. Now, I don't want this video to drag out, so let's go straight into the video. If you like this content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsters.com. So what is mutation testing, right? It's a, it's a weird, fancy name, but at its core, it just means that you are testing your tests. That's, that's effectively it. You're trying to see if when changes are introduced, your tests fail, because if they do fail, then your tests are good. If you introduce changes in your existing code that you tested and your tests don't fail, then your tests are bad. So that is what mutation testing is trying to do. It is introducing changes in your existing source code, like changed operators, changed link statements. There's actually an extensive list I'm going to show you in a second, but it's introducing actual changes in your code. And those changes create a new version of your program called a mutant. And you're trying to make sure you kill all the mutants and then you get a mutation score. I know many names, I'm going to show that in action, but I need you to understand But the idea behind mutation testing is to make sure that the tests you have already wrote are good. Let me just show that in an example here first. It's a very simple one. I have uh, a simple project here that just has a calculator class. So I'm adding two numbers, I'm subtracting one number from another, multiplying and then dividing. And obviously you can't divide by zero, so I'm throwing an exception. And this all I think looks good, right? You have your plus, minus, multiplied, and remainder here, uh, result and remainder. And then I went ahead and I wrote some tests over here. So what I'm testing is 5 plus 5 is 10, 5 minus 5 is 0, 1 uh, multiplied by 1 is 1, of course, and then 1 divided by 1 is 1 without any remainder, and then divided by 0 throws an exception. So all that is pretty straightforward. Now, if I go down here in the unit testing window and I ask Rider to cover my tests, so effectively get a percentage of how much of my code is covered by the tests I've written, how many of these individual lines are being traversed by the test code. So let's go ahead and do that and let's see what we get. So I can exclude the, the test folder, it doesn't really matter. But as you can see, every method is fully covered, like every single line of them. And that's why you can see this green here uh, is covered. I'm testing my exception, I'm testing my remainders, I'm testing everything. So you would say that this code is covered, this is fine, right? Well, let's go ahead and run mutation testing against those tests and see what we get back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the CLI and then I'm going to go into the tests and then the example test project. So I'm here now. And first, what I want to do is I want to install striker.net, the CLI tool. And I can install this globally, but because I want this to be runnable by my CI CD pipeline or anyone else who checks out the code, I can do that locally on the project level. So first, I want to say.NET new tool manifest. Here we go. Then I want to say.NET tool install.NET striker that is now installed locally on that test project. And now I can actually run my mutation tests. So all I need to do is say .NET Striker. And now Striker will start running and detect my test project, see one out of one. It's going to create as many mutants as it can. It found five tests, created 12 mutants. And like we said before, a mutant is a version of my application that's slightly changed. And then it killed seven mutants, but five of them survived. We don't want survivors it actually generates a report over here. So let's go ahead and see what the report has to say. So as you can see here, that's what the report looks like. And this is my mutation score, this 58%. Now the mutation score is a percentage of killed mutants divided by the total mutants. So that's how we generate it. And you want that to be 100%, but realistically in a big project, it won't be. It would probably be more around 80 to 90, ideally. So you can click on this and see exactly the code and see exactly what mutation caused this mutant to survive. So I can click on that and this says removal of block mutation survived. This means a striker went in, it removed this code, but the test still passed. Let's actually see this in action. If I go in my code in a calculator and I delete this, and obviously I can't delete it, but I will say return zero, right? That's the default of uh, the integer. Then when I go ahead and I run my unit tests, 
all of them still pass because my only test case was testing against zero. So this could potentially be grounds for a bug if someone just went in and changed the code. You don't want this to fail when you just change the outcome to something completely different. So what I would do now to fix that is I would go in and I would add a second test case here and that would be 10 divided by five, that is five. So now if I go back to striker and I clear that and I run .NET striker again, let's see what we have now. So now the score increased. Let's go ahead and open that uh, report and see what we got now. So as you can see, 66.6 .6 now. I can click on that and see what happened. So that is no longer a problem, but then multiply also survived. Let's see what happened here. Arithmetic mutation survived. So striker went in and it changed the multiply with a divide and the test still passed. Let's go ahead and see that again in our code. Effectively what it did is it went in here and changed multiply with divide. That's a fundamentally different thing. However, when I run this, watch what happens. My test still passes. Why does it pass? Well, because one divided by one is one and one multiplied by one is one. So my test was actually quite bad. I need to add um, more cases here. So you can see how this just helps us identify these weak tests. And even though my code coverage was 100%, that didn't say anything. I still had quite bad tests. In fact, you can remove the accession and your code coverage would still be 100%. And by the way, Striker will also notify you if a line is not covered by tests. So you can suppress that if you want to, uh, but it will also let you know without having an external uh, code coverage tool. So now if I go back to the CLI and I clear that and I do again another uh, .NET Striker, let's wait for a bit and see what happens. I should note, by the way, that because this is heavily modifying code as it's going to create those mutants, it will be slower than something like unit testing executions. So ideally you want that to be part of your CI pipeline, not really something you run every single waking moment as you're writing your code, or maybe you run it once before you check in your code to make sure that the tests you wrote are good and then you fix anything that it found. So 75% now, let's go and open that report and let's make this bigger. So now if I click on that, you can see that this problem is fixed. And now we have two more problems. Now the first one is this one here this code could be removed and this application would still work perfectly. I think that's because if you actually just divide by zero with the actual division, this divide by zero exception will be thrown anyway. So what I can do, I can simply go here and this is not necessary. And if I run my tests again, hopefully they will pass because, well, that's the default behavior. I didn't need to add that. But I didn't know that beforehand. Nobody told me. Striker told me, but I didn't know. And then the last one is that you can change that to a multiply and this would still survive. So let's go back here and add a few more useful test cases. So divide should be four divided by two should give you two with no remainder. And then five divided by two should give you two with one remainder. So if I go back and execute all these test cases, hopefully they're all passing. And yes, they are all passing. And if I go back to Striker and execute it, let's see what this has to say. So as you can see, now my score is 100%. All the mutants were killed, none survived. So this piece of code is covered by good tests, which is what we want. Now Striker has excellent documentation. And as you can see here, it also works with JS, Scala. So Striker is a cross language and cross framework project. We only care about the .NET, of course, but if you're writing in any of those other languages, it actually has alternatives too. And what I want to bring your attention to is the mutations it will apply. It will actually apply all of these arithmetic mutations. So originally, if it finds a plus, it will turn it into a minus, a minus to a plus and so on, which is what we just saw actually in this video. Then equality operators, so bigger than, smaller than. This is where a lot of the bugs actually are introduced. And in case you didn't know, they actually base these mutations on actual research. This is not just, I think that I can change bigger to, to less than and call it a day. They actually have data uh, to back this up. So these are mutations that will cause bugs into your code and they have been verified to do so. And then you have logical operators, Boolean and assignments. You can go as far as collection initialization changes. So empty array instead of an array with some items, uh, removal of code in general, so removal of continue, of break, of go to. You can see how the removal of that code would actually make your tests fail, assuming your tests are good, which is again, what we're trying to do. This is trying to make sure that the tests you've already written are 
good. And in my opinion, mutation testing and that mutation score is way more important than code coverage because code coverage can be 100%, but it doesn't matter because if your tests are bad, it doesn't matter if you covered every line of code. Um, and it goes as far as to link methods. It will change a single or default to a single to see if that fails. Uh, so there's plenty of things here, even regex. The striker documentation is excellent. So if you think that what you saw in this is important, they have quite a lot of stuff here to actually guide you through the process and installation and configuration. So I highly recommend you check the project, give it a summer GitHub. I believe it is excellent and more people should be doing mutation testing because I do see quite bad unit tests all over the place. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, more than like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.